Hello everyone, welcome to Edu Made Easy. We offer a collection of free resources for IGCSC and checkpoint exams. For more, please visit www.edumadeeasy.com. Today we're going to be solving the chemistry question bank redox reaction. Let's get started. Okay, so the first question says, describe the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride in your answer, include a label diagram of the apparatus used and the observations made at the positive and the negative electrode. Okay, so first, considering the apparatus, right? So always draw with a pencil, not with a pen. So what we need in an electrolysis experiment, we need basically some kind of container, right? Either a beak or something. And then what do we have to have? We have to have two electrodes in the electrolyte. So I'm just gonna say this is my electrolyte and just, oops. And just draw like this. Two electrodes. So one is the anode, one is the cathode. And just draw your electrolyte like this. And this has to connect to an external circuit like this. Electrolyte, you have to label as sodium chloride. So molten electrodes, you can label. First, this one is the anode. This is the cathode. Um, and then you can say the, this is the external circuit. So what you have labeled is the two electrodes dipping into the liquid, the electrode electrolyte labeled, the external circuit labeled, and also the electrodes, electrodes labeled. Now for the second part, the observations made are the positive and the negative anode. So when we dissociate the ions of sodium chloride, we would get what? Na plus Cl minus. And notice it says molten and not aqueous, right? So therefore, we won't have the addition of H plus and OH minus ions. Therefore, since the positive electrode is the anode, anodes, uh, what products are formed there? Non-metals, right? So at the anode, there would be chlorine gla uh, gas. What is chlorine gas? It's a pale yellow green gas, right? Pale yellow green gas. And then sodium is just basically going to be a silvery solid, you can say. So this is for Cl2, this is just for Na sodium. Next, it says crystals of magnesium chloride, MgCl6H2O. So this is hydrated, right? can be prepared by adding excess magnesium powder to dilute hydrochloric acid. Describe how to prepare a sample of pure dry magnesium chloride crystals after the reaction is complete. In your answer, describe how to firstly remove the excess magnesium from the mixture. So let's go point by point. So first point, you have to describe how to remove the excess magnesium from the reaction mix mixture. So since it's a solid, right, we can filter off the magnesium. Um, that, so that would be for the first point. Second point, we have to crystallize the magnesium chloride. So whenever you're crystallizing, you have to warm the filtrate to form a saturated solution, right? Because then it will only crystallize. So warm filtrate to form uh, saturated solution. And then what you're going to do is you're going to filter off the crystals as well, right? So this is kind of conjoining to point two, a uh, filter of the crystals. Then for the final point, if you're drying off the crystals, you obviously want to uh, wash the crystals first with a water, cold water, because you want to take any impurities out. So wash crystals with water. And then dry in like an oven or something like that. 
in our this would be your third point this one and that's how you do that next question sodium hydride nah reacts with iron 3 oxide balance the equation for this reaction so we have two ions on this side so we'll have to put two here and then we have three NAs on this side. So we have to put three here. So it should be two Fe and three NaOH. Explain how this equation shows that iron three oxide is reduced. So let's look at iron three oxide, the two kind of places where we can see iron. So here and here, right? So the main difference is what? Iron oxide has just become iron. So what does that show? Iron has lost oxygen, right? Sorry, iron three oxide has lost oxygen has lost oxygen. That's how it's reduced. Because reduced, why well, you can define it in three different ways. Reduction with oil rig, we can say it's a gain of electron, loss of oxygen, and also reduction in oxidation number. Basically, oxidation number goes Anhydrous cobalt to chloride is used to test for water. State the color change from this test. So anhydrous cobalt chloride is going to be blue in color. And when it becomes hydrated cobalt to chloride, it's going to become pink. So you have to know this color change. Also for the copper to sulfate crystals, anhydrous copper to sulfate is going to be white. And then uh, hydrated is going to be blue. Sorry, not copper to solve the copper. Yeah, copper. Okay. Lead is extracted from L lead to oxide by heating with carbon. So it's heated with carbon because what? It's uh, carbon is more reactive, so it can be reduced. Describe how this equation shows that L lead to oxide is reduced. So again, look at the two places where you can see lead. We have lead oxide and lead here. What has happened? What is the main difference? Obviously, it's that lead to oxide has lost oxygen. So it's similar to that iron three oxide question. Lost oxygen. Okay, now next question. The chemical equation for the reaction between iron three oxide and carbon monoxide is shown. Explain how this equation shows that carbon monoxide has been oxidized. So again, look um, at carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide has become what? Carbon dioxide. So being from CO to CO2, what has it gained? It's gained an extra oxygen atom, right? So what does that tell us? It says carbon monoxide has gained oxygen. That's how we know it's oxidized. Because again, oxygen, oxidized, sorry, oxidation can be defined in three ways. A loss of electrons from oilric, a gain of oxygen, and an increase in oxidation number goes up. Green nickel to sulfate crystals turn yellow when heated. Suggest so how you would change yellow nickel sulfate to green nickel, nickel sulfate. So you can see that yellow to green, right? So if this is when heated, obviously the other, other reaction would be when we're adding water, right? So to turn it from yellow to green, we would have to add water. Identify which word best describes green nickel to sulfate with the formula NiSO4 7H2O. So green nickel sulfate is going to be basically your hydrated form of nickel to sulfate. So we'll have to circle hydrated. Calcium oxide is made by the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate. And we have to define or state the meaning of the term thermal decomposition. So thermal decomposition is an, again a definition you have to know. It's basically the breakdown of a substance um, on heating or using heat. So breakdown of a substance using heat. So that's why thermal is what heat decomposition is breaking down. So you can kind of break down the word itself or the phrase itself and identify what it means. So breakdown of a substance using heat. Describe a test for calcium ion. So what we can use, we can use the aqueous cation test with the sodium hydroxide. So we can add aqueous sodium hydroxide. 
And what would we get? We would get a white precipitate. Or you can also say adding ammonia. But then what would you get? You would also get a, a very slight white precipitate or actually no precipitate at all. So no precipitate um, when you add aqueous ammonia. So you can do either one. So this one or this one. Complete the word equation for the reaction of hydrochloric acid with calcium carbonate. So this is an acid plus metal carbonate reaction, which is actually mentioned in the syllabus as one of the reactions you have to know for the general equations. So when you're reacting acid with a metal carbonate, it's basically acid plus base. So you'll get a salt you get additionally carbon dioxide and then water as always. So I say, how do we um, get the name of the salt? Let's see the ions here. We have calcium ion and carbonate ion, and then we have H plus ion here, Cl minus. So you're going to take away the carbon dioxide. There, are, and then you're gonna take the H plus as well, because this is what makes acid H plus. This is what make carbonate a carbonate. And then what do you have left? You have calcium here and chloride. So your salt would be named calcium chloride. And then you're gonna write carbon dioxide here. Do not write CO2, it says word equation, or you won't get the mark. So rem remember to write it in names or words. Aluminum can be used to reduce iron three oxide to iron. That's why iron, uh, sorry, aluminum is more reactive than iron. Describe how this equation shows that iron three oxide is reduced. Again, see, circle the two places where you see iron. Obviously, iron three oxide loses oxygen. And the last question says, aluminum is used for electric cables. State one other use of aluminum and give a reason for this use in terms of the properties of aluminum. So the most common thing I can remember is that fact that uh, aluminum is used for food containers because of its improved resistance for corrosion against corrosion, so food containers. And why it's a resistance to corrosion. Other than that, you can also say um, aircraft because of its low density and also saucepan because it's a good conductor of heat. Okay, thank you for watching.